Hi guys, I'm outside today. What a beautiful, beautiful day it is. And it's Monday, so that makes the Monday even a little bit better when it's this nice outside. It definitely, definitely, definitely feels like spring outside. So please take advantage of this beautiful weather. Just, get, just step outside for a little bit. We're not supposed to really be going anywhere, but we can still, you know, get outside, get in our own backyards and just get some fresh air this afternoon and um, maybe go for a little walk if you have an adult to go with you or you have permission from an adult just to get get out a little bit and get outside and like I said still we want to practice that social distancing staying six feet apart from people if you are around other people but just getting outside and getting some fresh air it's very 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 nice out today so I'm here to continue our read aloud journey and believe it or not I was just looking and we're almost going to be finished with this read aloud so we'll have to be um, deciding on something else so again if you have any recommendations or thoughts on what you want me to read next, I would love to hear them. Please just send me an email, or if you're on one of my Google Classrooms, please feel free to post it in there as well. So we will read um, chapters 10 and 11 today, and then we will finish up with chapters 12 and 13 tomorrow, and then we'll be all done with this book. So I'm going to read today chapters 10 and 11. I hope you enjoy. Chapter 10. In the box of pictures now ruined were Bloom and her kittens, four tiny bodies, all wet and dark. I've only been gone an hour, I whispered. Grandma smiled. That's all it takes sometimes. Sorry about the pictures, Journey, said Grandfather. I sighed. It's all right. It was impossible, but it was that baby's hand. My voice trailed off. We watched the kittens fumbling to nurse and listened to their soft meowings. Bloom stared up at Grandma. Yes, Grandma said as if answering a question the rest of us hadn't heard. You are a wonderful mother. Cat reached down and rubbed Bloom's chin. Who taught her? I asked suddenly. Taught her what? said Cooper. How to have kittens? No, I said. How to be a mother? There was silence. Grandfather lifted his shoulders. Mothers know, he said, looking at Grandma. Cat said what I was thinking. Not all of them. No one spoke, but as if Bloom had understood our words, she began to clean her baby, showing us how to be a mother. Grandpa, I said, I want to take a picture with the timer. My grandmother and Cat groaned at the same time. Oh no, complained Cat. Don't tell me, two of them. Grandfather grinned at me. Of course he wants to take a family picture. Out in the hall, Journey. In the hallway, Grandfather's camera and his tripod leaned against the wall. I'll take the picture. I'm not family, Cooper called to me. I stood in the doorway and looked at Cooper through the viewfinder. His cowboy hat still sat on top of his head. Cooper, I said, you're part of the family, but I want to take this picture. When I moved the camera, I saw Grandfather smiling at me from across the room. Now, I said, everyone. There was laughter. What, I asked. You sound like you know who, said Cat, bending her head toward Grandfather. Who, asked Grandfather. The photographer twins, said Cooper wryly. Now, I said, everybody. I shot a look at Cat. Grandma sat Cat next to her, leaning back against her shoulder. Cooper knelt behind them, Grandfather on the other side, watching me closely. Ready, I said. Time slows somehow as I look through the camera. I watch Bloom look at her babies. I watch Grandma kiss the top of Cat's head and Cat turn to smile up at her. I see Cooper with his dumb hat and my grandfather smiling at me because he knows I am looking at him. Smile, I say to them, but I don't need to say it because they are all smiling, real smiles with their eyes too. 10, nine, eight, I say, and Cooper's hat tilts and Cat snorts with laughter. Seven, six, I run to get into the picture and grandfather reaches out a hand toward me. I tumble into his arms across his lap and he holds me there, looking a little surprised as if I'm a newborn baby. I stare at the button on his shirt, then I stare up at his face. Quick, he whispers to me, and I turn and look into the camera just as the shutter clicks and Cooper's hat falls down. The kitchen was dark and cool and quiet. Cooper had stayed for dinner, chicken and mashed potatoes and peas. It's good to eat with people who don't have food on their faces, said Cooper seriously. He paused, but I love Emmett. You do, agreed Grandma. Grandfather, his chin leaning on his hand, looked at Cooper. You're a good brother, he said. Under the table, I felt a sudden brush against my legs. Bloom looked up at me. Then she walked to the screen door. Where's she going, I asked, alarmed. Cat got up from the dinner table. She's going out, Journey. Don't fret. She opened the door, and Bloom went out to sit on the porch. Cat turned to look at me. She'll come back, she said softly. Cooper got up, too. Thank you, he said. I like to get home for Emma's bath. He went out to the porch and stood for a moment next to Bloom. Then he put on his hat. Bye, Cooper, said Cat. We went out, all of us, and waved to Cooper. Maybe someday, said Cat thoughtfully, I will marry him. Grandma, smiling, tapped Cat on her shoulder. The two of them went to their garden. Grandfather stood next to me, fiddling with his camera. I looked up at him, trying hard to remember something new, something at the edge of my mind. He put the camera around his neck. 
Think I'll take a small walk to the hen house. I smiled and watched him walk down the steps. Inside, the phone rang and he turned. I'll get it, I called to him. Hello? I looked at the screen door. Journey, is that you? Says my mother. There is crackling on the line and I stand very still, watching my grandfather walk away from the house. Journey? Her voice is stronger now. So how have you been? I take a breath. A cat has come, I say. And the cat is a very good mother, my voice rises, and she is staying here with me forever. Chapter 11. Grandfather found me in the barn. Light slanted through the windows and dust motes floated in the air between us. He sat next to me on the bench in front of the wall of pictures. There were dozens now that spread across the back wall, some I'd never seen. There's a new one, I said, pointing to a close-up of a fierce-looking chicken. That chicken pecked me on the wrist, said Grandfather. He held out his hand to show me the small red puncture wound. Taking pictures is dangerous business. I nodded, looking at the pictures I had taken, all soft and blurred. My grandfather holding Emma on his knees. There was silence. She asked me how I was, I said after a moment. I looked up at grandfather, and she never said she was sorry for, for leaving. Grandfather sighed. No, Lydia doesn't want to feel guilty. Well, she is guilty, I said. That grandfather bent his head down next to me to hear. And then she said, they were only pictures, Journey. Grandfather reached over and put his arm around me. I leaned against him. A picture stops a little piece of time, good or bad, and saves it, he said. Your mama never thought there was anything worth looking back on after your papa left. She thought all good things were ahead of her, waiting to happen, just around the corner. Your mama doesn't really understand about the pictures. But we understand, don't we, I said. Grandfather's arm tightened around me. We do, I sighed. I sure would like things to look back on. It was quiet in the barn. Somewhere in the garden, Grandma was playing the flute, the beginnings of a song I didn't know. Grandma's getting better, I said. Yes, said Grandfather, and it's a good thing, too, he added, making me smile. Mama wants me to visit her, I said. Grandfather got up and went to the wall of pictures and bent down as if he were examining them. I told her I couldn't. I told her I have a cat and kittens to take care of. Grandfather straightened. I told her someday, maybe, if she sent me words instead of money, I might visit, maybe. Grandfather said nothing. Grandfather? What journey? His voice was soft. I told her that nothing is perfect. Sometimes things are good enough. I got up and stood, stood next to him and looked at the family picture of all of us, our necks all white in the sun as we looked up at the airplane overhead. I like that picture, I said. So do I. You said it would be a good picture, remember? I looked at the picture of all of us framed in the barn doorway with a blur of chicken flying past. Is that the chicken that pecked you? I asked. Grandfather began to laugh. Might be. He threw back his head, and I stared at him, surprised at that sound. It had been a long time since I'd heard him laugh, and suddenly I thought of Mr. McDougall's kiss on my forehead, how strange it had felt. I watched Grandfather, and then, before he stopped laughing, before I wanted to remember what it was like, I stood on tiptoe and kissed him. That's the end of the chapter. But I just wanted to show you, because it talks a lot throughout this book, about that picture of the family all looking up at the airplane, and that picture is actually on the cover of this book so you can kind of get a better visual of that picture it's kind of what I pictured in my head of course it's not always as good as we picture in our head but that was pretty darn close all right so that's all for our read aloud today tomorrow remember we're going to be finishing this book and then on Wednesday we will be starting something new so if you have any ideas please send them my way. Like I said, get outside today. It's beautiful out. Get some fresh air. Stay away from people, but at least get out and get some fresh air. Thank you so much. Have a great afternoon.